Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Songyu Park from uh, Gangwon National University in uh, South Korea, um, and I go by Sean. Okay, today I'd like to talk about uh, our research using web data to reveal 22-year history of sneaker designs. And in this study, we crawled a large-scale sneaker image in a global online research shop, and we extracted color and shape information from these images to construct construct deep learning based. Uh, sneaker design repre representation vectors. So as you can see, this is very much like um, applied data mining project. So I hope you guys can sit back and enjoy. So we live in the like design world of spaces, objects, spaces, interfaces, and media. And uh, in the last decade, data science method was successfully used uh, to study changes over long time periods in style and content in many cultural forms. But um, uh, only a few papers up to now use data science so far to analyze long term evolution for a few design, uh, few design areas. So we can say, I can say that our work is the kind of first to analyze change in design of popular consumer physical objects such as sneakers over 20 years uh, using data science methods. So um, here are two sets of sneaker models. The upper set has become like globally popular. In other words, they are becoming hyped, whereas the lower has not become so much. And so we were wondering what makes the difference between these two sets. In order to answer this question, we need to first develop methods to examine and understanding the design trajectory of sneaker designs. So uh, the methods can be used for other items of the fashion industry too, and seeing general trends in thousands of models and having uh, quantitative models that describe such evolution and predict some aspects of future trends and consumer reactions is valuable for stakeholders, we think. And in this slide, we set up four research questions. The first one is, what can we learn from the web data about how sneakers as a mass fashion item have evolved? And the second one is what models can explain a latent dimensions of formal and aesthetic trends from a large data set? And the third one is to what extent do embeddings of color and shape differ by product type and reselling premium? And the last one is what can we say about brand identity based on the analysis? So in order to answer those questions, we firstly, uh, crawled data, mainly the sneaker images and the, met, uh, the uh, metadata currently from a uh, leading online research shop at global scale and the name is StockX. And so these are the basic statistics of the collected data. So we have, we crawled around 23K uh, model, sneaker models from around 92 brands and Based on these uh, basic uh, data set, we firstly did uh, the feature engineering in terms of color aspects and then the shape aspects as well. So for the color attributes, we extracted uh, the mean and standard deviation for RGB and HSV. So total it's 12, 12 dimensions. And then we also extract shape uh, based on the unsupervised image segmentation, and we also extract some features. I, I will just skip the details, but we, we can uh, recognize the segmentations of the each sneaker model. And based on that, we try to do uh, exploratory data, data analysis first, uh, or we can say EDA. So based on the, uh, the metadata EDA, uh, we can say that the metadata indicates the exponential growth of the business. And as more sneakers are sold via the platform, the resale premium per transaction trends to decrease, um, as you can see in here. Uh, but uh, we can also see that the top 10% of sneakers with the highest premium uh, transactions led to a uh, around $300 to $400 premium per sale. And uh, if we just see the overall 10, uh, top 10% 10 of the transactions, the resale premium is going higher. So that was the like insight from the metadata. Um, and then we also 
try to see the trends based on the HS3, um, the, the image of the uh, extracted features. And then uh, we can see that the H was decreasing. And so we can say that the larger portions of sneakers come in colors in the yellow orange wheel. And so when we, we, we also can see the like uh, S, saturation S is also decreasing. So we can interpret as more and more pastel tone sneakers are, are introduced in the market. And when we see the last one, the V, uh, this is about the light. And then V uh, as V fluctuates, and we can see that uh, this is based on the season, season effect. And when the, the season is becoming winter, uh, the color uh, the, uh, the color is sneaker is, is becoming more darker. And then uh, the season is becoming summer and the, the sneaker becomes lighter. So we, we could see, we could check uh, the trends based on the data. Um, so our data analysis demonst demonstrate the, pu the publicly available web data gathered from a reselling market. But the, the one drawback of such uh, approach is that the derived features may not fully represent the data since each feature captures limited aspects of the product. So we therefore investigate how to extract latent representations from the cynical images by minimizing the loss of information while reducing the dimensions. Um, in here, so we try to use uh, contrast, contrast learning as self structured learning. And so we try to use one very popular method, Simclair, uh, which is also one of the well-known contrast learning method. So this is a simple framework for construct, contrast learning of visual representations. Mm -hmm. And so this is basically a composed uh, data augmentations to play a, a critical, role, critical role. And so uh, meaning of data augmentations, we can use crop or resize or rotate or cut off uh, in order to perform the, uh, the, the changing the shape. And we can also use Sobel filter to make it the images as black and white in terms of colors. And so, so this is the, the loss function here. And ZI and ZJ are latent representations of two different views of the target image. And as you can see here, SIM is the cosine similarity function. And here tau is, the, is a temperature parameter that controls the entropy of output. And um, it should be positive non-zero and below one. And we just use uh, 0 0.5 based on the other references. So the rough idea for the control learning is try to make an augmentation uh, for each target images and try to you know, uh, pull together or attract together for the, for the augmentation from, from same target images while repel or push further from the augment of the augmentation from the different target images. So that is the basic idea. And we try to uh, use to that idea into our model. And uh, so based on the based on EDA, we particularly focus on the two design attributes like color and shape and color shape and combined of the color and shape. And so we make it these three um, projection head, as you can see, the first one is related to the color embedding. And the second one is related to the shape embedding. The last one is related to uh, combined embedding. And the, the contrast, uh, con uh, con uh, contrast objects for different heads are jointly optimized in an end-to-end -end fashion. And so how, how uh, you can interpret this model is, uh, for example, the shape invariant head here uh, groups cynical images by all features except for shape and in turn allows the uh, embedding to contain mostly color related information. And that is going to uh, in the same way for the shape embedding as well. And the same thing for going for the combined embedding as well. And uh, not only we just make it these three modules, but we try to make, uh, uh, include a design aspect masking module uh, here. This is, uh, to make it a uh, shape, color, and combined attributes became disentangled via the newly added masking module here. And the masking module has trainable parameters and provides a weight vector that helps the model uh, concentrate on each design aspect. Um, and this is, we, we can say that this is very similar to the original attention mechanism uh, method. 
And by putting this uh, masking module, so we can say the each aspect or each attribute, uh, the latent representations uh, can, can view solely from that attributes, not distracted from other attributes. So that, that is the basic idea. And this is the, the basic formula for that. So M is mas masking module and F is pre-trained uh, pre ResNet 18 uh, layers of uh, image net. And then we just put it into the uh, projection head uh, to, to extract the latent information from, from each um, shape or color or combined attributes and then put it into uh, the loss function that I introduced before. So that's the basic uh, idea of this model. And um, based, based on these, and then we extract embeddings based on our model. And then we try to evaluate our model in two terms. The first is based on the qualitative uh, perspective. And uh, the first one is based on quantitative perspective. And then we try to do it in qualitative perspective. So for the quantitative uh, perspective, we try to uh, classify a primary category and consumer type and maximum resale premium. So like premium category has eight class classes, including like Nike basketball or LeBron or um, um, so on and so on. So it's uh, it composed by eight classes. And then the consumer type has like five classes, including female or male or uh, preschool. And maximum resale premium, we try to uh, use just binary classes like high and low. And we see the data distribution and we, uh, we, couldn't, we, we could detect the high, top 20% percentile of the premium and we just label them as high and low for the others and try to uh, you know, classify them. Um, so the, uh, and we, from here, well, we try to do it as feature engineering. And then uh, we also try to uh, use some con concept learning uh, methods, uh, uh, which is look. And this is uh, the state of the art model based on the context, concept learning in deep learning, uh, uh, deep learning area. And uh, I will not go into details, but the results constantly demonstrate that our embedding contains uh, meaningful inform information for many down downstream tasks. And uh, the results were steady with other classifiers. We, we use uh, neural net uh, multi-layer perceptron classifiers and multi-layer perceptron uh, regressor to, to check uh, the performance. And it was, but uh, the results were steady for other classifiers like multinomial, multinomial logistic uh, classifier or, uh, or actually boost as well. And why, why, we, why we didn't use or we put these kind of labels into our embedding models because we want to, you know, want to extract more general embeddings, which is uh, that is not uh, trained from any labels. So that's why we uh, try to use self supervised learning for the for making the embeddings and try to evaluate in the, uh, in the, um, in deep uh, independent manner. So after that, we also try to uh, quali qualitatively evaluate our embedding. And so the, uh, the upper one is based on the color embedding and uh, we try to cluster them by k-means and just uh, reduce by two, uh, two dimensions by using UMAP. And then the, the, uh, the bottom one is shape embedding and we just use the same technique. Um, so, uh, uh, and the visualization, show, visualization shows that the clusters divide the data well, and then uh, the, each red dot represents uh, the centroid for each drive cluster. And uh, you can see the, the, the centroid model itself. And um, so here is uh, the left top one for each cluster. Cluster is the centroid images and others are the, the like uh, 15 nearest neighbors of the centroid. So when we see the color embedding, uh, so all colors, the, the neighbors, they seem very uh, much al alike for, for, for the centers of the, of the colors. And when we see the shape, uh, very interestingly, the, uh, the neighbor samples were very much alike with the shape. As you can see, some of them uh, are very uh, low, low model and some of them are very high top model. So, uh, we can also uh, consider that the embedding models are quite well uh, extracted. 
So what? Uh, so so then we try to uh, you know explore temporal uh, sneaker uh, sneaker uh, design traits based on our extractive embeddings. So we so based on these two dimensional U map, we just make it one dimensional uh, sneaker design in index by using a PCA and then just uh, uh, trace all the over 22 years of the uh, designs. And, um, uh, and for, for, for color, so the, the upper one is about the colors. For color, the design indices were gradually converging over 22 years. And then for shape here, the design indexes were relatively unique for each brand. And we try to you know, verify the findings by calculating the average pairwise cosine similarity uh, for, uh, for each brand uh, one by one. So uh, the research finding is we uh, utilize the color and shape information as a proxy of sneaker design uh, embedding from a large collection of sneaker models. And we de developed a neural net embedding uh, from a sneakers uh, product based on the unsupervised learning. And we develop a new sneaker design index uh, in order to represent the evolution of design over time. And we try to compare like temporal design changes over uh, across major brands. And as a result, we showed and verified that over a 22 year long period, the design indices across brands gradually converge based on color, whereas the index of shape is relatively unique for each brand. So this, so we think that this is why uh, when we uh, try to classify uh, for shape and color relatively on or overall um, shape, so the shape embedding shows great performance than color. So I think uh, so this uh, insight is also connected with our classification results as well. Sorry for taking your time, but this is my, I think the last slide. Um, and uh, my second last slide. And this is our, my last slide. Okay. So, uh, so there are a few takeaways in, in the current project. So um, quantitative indexes that captures evolution of both corporate and personal brand offerings uh, in compact ways will be useful for companies, creators, or uh, any other stakeholders. And the indexes would, would allow comparison of pattern across many brands. And I think uh, it also track, it can also track changes in design or content over time uh, and in any industrial cultural segment as a whole. So we propose such index uh, and test it on popular mass fashion item with no labels required. So for the future directions, uh, for interpretability, we plan to apply like post hoc methods uh, to enhance the interpretability. And we also try to adapt more advanced augmentation method because we just use uh, the crop and resize and software filter for the augmentation method. And we believe there'll be more advanced augmentation method as well. And we also try to expand our data sources uh, especially by including the text-based user review, re reviews and discussions. And um, we want to you know, put, put into the uh, multi-modality models and then try to extract the, the value of reminiscence that people uh, talk about and try to classify or predict the premium resale. Uh, and we, uh, I, I expect we can have much uh, better performance by using the multimodality uh, data set. And, not, uh, and uh, lastly, not, not only for the sneaker image, sneakers, but we also, we also try to apply our methods to quantify the evolution of style based on uh, in, in some other design, design areas like popular fashion items or web designs and so on. Okay, thank you very much for listening. And, um, in, uh, in, in this link, you can also check the, all the codes and data sets uh, by yourself. So please uh, feel free to check the, the GitHub, GitHub. And um, if you want to uh, contact me, feel free to uh, reach out to me via this email, uh, the, this homepage. Okay, thank you. And I'm, I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, so thank you for presenting uh, some of you. And then are there any questions from the audience? Yeah, oh, and then actually sorry for managing the time. So I guess because of time, so I actually have one question and then maybe the other audience can contact to 
team via the uh, email and something like that. But yeah, so actually I have one question. So in the, in the uh, research table, so in the recent study, then one of the interesting is that the shape is, yeah, as you mentioned, the shape is the more important to figure out the, and then the predicting some kind of things than the color. And I'm not actually an expert on the sneakers, <laughs> but well, I, I imagine that there is a one model and then there are several various types of the colors from the same shape. That is it true or not? I mean, if it is, then I think the color itself is more important than the shape to predicting the consumer types or the other kinds of things. And then what's your opinion about that? Um, um, yes, yes, yes and no, I think, because yeah, there will be more. Uh, so if you see the feature engineering, so there will be more color related features than, than segmentations mm -hmm. or segmentation or, or like, uh, 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 or, or shapes. Uh, so there will be uh, the, the feature imbalance between color and shape. But uh, when we see the contrast learning, our model, so actually our model um, try to, you know, uh, use data augmentations based on the, the shape, uh, the shape, uh, the different shape augmentations and different color augmentation independently. So I think um, they're, they're, they, will be, they will be with the same level. I would say color and shape. Mm -hmm, I see. So we, I think we can we can compare them uh, in in a in a uh, fairly manner. I think. Mm -hmm, I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even even with that base, uh, that basis, still the shape shows better uh, performance per, uh, prediction result. And I so I speculate that that is because of the the more unique uniqueness of the shape. Of the of the sneakers 